So the next question to look at is this the first child of AS genotype couple that is um AS couple what's the genotype of the first two children so this is where I want to bring in my dice this is where I want to bring this in because this is what we're talking about this is the the dice and I let's go back to because that's the best way to look at it and I think this would help to answer the question better so we're going back into sharing again okay so the question was about the first two children yeah of an AS an AS couple it doesn't matter whether it's the first second third or tenth child what we're saying is in each pregnancy there is the same risk and as I showed you the dice it's like throwing the dice and I'm thinking okay what's my chance of throwing and coming up with a six and then I throw the dice what's my chance of getting it to this is this is a chance this so there is nothing that suggests that your first child will be SS or your second child will be AS or your third child will be A no each time you're pregnant remember we said each parent is contributing one gene type each time you're pregnant that pregnancy has a 25 percent chance of an ss genotype it also has a 25 percent chance of an aa genotype and there's a 50 percent chance that it's as that that pregnant that that child has the as genotype so i know this picture shows you one parent one parent and then four offspring it does it's not saying that if you have four children you're going to have one who has ss and then two with as and then one with ss no it's showing that in each pregnancy the chance of having one of these genotypes is that percentage as i've said for the as it's 50 percent chance for the ss is a 25 percent chance and for the um aaa it's a 25 percent chance that's the same in every single pregnancy so whether it's the first or whether it's the second we, we don't know without doing tests so if you're sitting there and thinking okay well because dr sylvia said it's 25 percent, so what you need to ask yourself is that 25 percent chance can you take that risk can you take that risk it's a big chance we could say, well, there's 25 percent chance that the child will have an AA genotype, or oh well, there's a 50 percent chance that the child can have the AS genotype. But there's a big 25 percent chance that that child could have the SS genotype. You can't do anything about it outside of tests. If you can't afford to have the treatment, you can't do anything about it. It's like tossing a coin. You don't know. Can you take that chance? And that's what I say to people when I when they ask me this question. I say to them, this is the situation. If every time, whether it's the first or the third or the seventh or the whatever, hundredth pregnancy, it's going to be the same because these genes are coming from you. And how, how does the coin fall? How do you toss it? How does it fall? Which one is going to come from you, this particular pregnancy? Is it going to be the S? Is it going to be the A? We don't know that. That's the chance that you have to take. Okay, so that's the that's looking at that question. Now, related to that, how many children can a couple with AS and AS genotypes have without an SS? How many children can a couple with AS and AS genotypes have without an AS? Okay, so I'm going to, because I think that might be, I just realized actually that might be, so let me just hide that so you can see. Okay, so now you can see the, you can see, you know, fully, you can see it properly, the um, image properly. So again, for that question, how many can a couple with AS and AS genotypes have without an S? We don't know. We don't know without doing those, without doing the tests. I'll talk a little bit about the tests. In a minute but we don't know you can't you, you can't sit here as an as genotype and think okay how many possible children could we have we don't know it's all a matter it's a chance because you both could contribute either an a or an s anytime you're pregnant and we don't know which one we can't predict whether you're going to contribute the s as the dad and whether your partner the lady is going to contribute the s 
in that particular pregnancy. Then the child is going to be assessed. For AC, AC genotypes the same. We don't know if you're going to contribute your C gene in that particular pregnancy or whether you're going to contribute, your partner is going to contribute their C gene in that pregnancy. We don't know because if you both contribute your C genes, then the child has a CC genotype. It is possible that in that pregnancy, you contribute the A and they contribute the A and the child has an AA genotype. It's chance. You got off, yeah, you, you got off with it. You remember there, there are times, there are things in life that we get away with. But that doesn't mean that the next time, and again, it doesn't matter. So what I'm trying to say to you is, in a family of four, it is possible to have all four children with the SS genotype if both you and your partner are AS genotypes. In a family of six, it is possible, that's a family with six kids, I mean, it is possible for all the six children to have the SS genotype or the CC genotype if both, if the couple are AC and AC genotype. It is also possible in that couple with that couple with the as genotype it is possible for the four children to be aa it is possible it is everything is possible but it's all about the chance can you risk it think about the possible think about the implications if you decide to sit and risk it there are some people who can potentially who can risk it because they have access to things that medicine and technology have devised that help to mitigate the situation. So it is possible to test the genotype or to, check, to test the genes in the baby before they're born. It is possible to carry out those tests in a process that's similar to IVF where the mom's eggs and the sperm from the dad mix together, fertilized, and then uh, scientists in the laboratory check the genetic status of the it of the fetus of the um, the baby that's formed and when they identify those that do not appear to have um um abnormal genotypes th th those um those babies or th that those that fetus is planted into the mom and she goes on to have the pregnancy in that case you would also check when the uh, when the, uh, a few months down the line or a few weeks down the line, you'd also check to be sure that because some of these tests at those first three four days after fertilization, some of them can have errors. But you then check again. But it is possible. Guess what? It's not available everywhere, and it's not available to people who can't afford it. These are expensive. Think IVF. Think dedicated specialist centers. Consider how can how accessible is this to somebody who lives in a um developing uh, or low and middle income country let's say low um, income country how accessible is this is it affordable so please consider that even though we've said there's a possibility that um the as genotype couple or the ac genotype couple may have children with the aa genotype it's a possibility there's an equal possibility that you could end up with an, an SS or a CC genotype couple on your uh, child on your hands with the complication that that deserves. So I really want to ring this. If you remember anything from this live stream, is this dice that we used to play games or when you're tossing a coin, it's to toss. You can't, we can't predict it. If it's happened and you haven't got any way to treat the condition, you haven't got any way to look after this child, then you have created a, a lifetime of distress and disorder for an innocent child. The impact upon yourself as an individual and your family, your partner, any other children, wide ranging implications. So I say to people who are asking for advice, about as genotype can we marry i say these are the implications that you have to think about um, and then make the decision what's how what can you what can you tolerate how much can you afford if you can afford the treatment if you can afford to go through the it's called pre-implantation genetic testing or diagnosis and the ivf component is the um this it's the, the area where the um eggs and the um sperm are combined together and then pregnancy is allowed once once the the fetus with that doesn't appear to have any abnormal genes is um, selected is put back into the mom's called pre-implantation genetic um, diagnosis for sickle cell disease it's used for different um gene um gene problem conditions but specific specifically for sickle cell disease it can be used it's expensive it's not available everywhere and it's not available to everyone okay there are also some tests that you could have um, after 
without going through IVF. So you could, uh, you know, fall pregnant. There are some tests that you could also have. We talk about that on our website as well. We have some posts dedicated to that as well, and um, that you could have in the first trimester to identify has this child got abnormal um, um, abnormal genes for um, sickle cell disease. Those tests can tell you, but then you also have to consider. So if it is, um, if it's got abnormal gene, what happens at that stage? Are you going to terminate the pregnancy and have an abortion? How many times potentially could you do this? So these are implications that you have to consider as a couple. It's difficult. It's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. But I think what's harder is looking at a child, an innocent child, this condition, the distress that can happen, not just to the child, which is the worst case, um, but also to the rest of the family or, or dealing, you know, dealing with death, which could happen, especially in countries where the healthcare system is not adequate, where there is lots of pressure on healthcare infrastructure. Treatment is just not available because don't get me wrong in, in good, in good um, centers in countries where you have established um, healthcare facilities who cater for people with this condition. It is possible to thrive. It's possible to take the medication. It's possible to do the things that would prevent you from falling ill. It's possible to have the vaccinations, to have the preventive treatments, to minimize the risk. And it's, these are possibilities. But we have to be frank. It's not available everywhere. And I'm speaking particularly where you're in a situation where you don't have access to these things. You don't have access, access to bone marrow transplant transplants, for example, that could cure or gene therapy or stem cell transplants. Again, I discussed that in my, um, on these articles in my website. If you don't have access to those, then all you're left with is this situation where children are exposed to serious risk of death and um, severe illness. And it's, it needs to be considered. Now, um, uh, another quick question, just, yes, yeah, so this is the, going to get into the last couple of questions before we round up. So this one says, I and my wife are AS genotype and we now have two kids with non as SS. Was that possible in the real sense? You know, I like this question and these are real questions. I'm getting these questions from viewers on my, on my channel or from Facebook or, um, Twitter. These are real questions. Yes, it is possible. I've just explained it. Let me take off the question so we can look at this, look at this slide again. It is possible. So in this, in this picture, you have the unaffected carrier. So that's, these are the AS couple, the top uh, couple in purple. That's the dad who's AS and that's the mom who's AS. You can see that they both have AS, AS to contribute to their potential offspring. Okay. So these offspring, offspring at the bottom, the blue one is unaffected. So they are AA and these two purple ones are AS. So they are carriers. They're not affected. That is, they don't have disease, but they are carriers. Well, the red is SS. So this is the person, this is the, this demonstrates the, per, the affected child. And at the bottom, it tells you the chance one in four, which is 25%, two in four, which is 50%, one in four, which is 25%. This is what I've said already. Now we're not looking at this, this couple having four children. Don't look at it that way because then you get it mixed up and you think, okay, well, my first child is going to be that or my second child. No, that, that's not it. It's that every time you are pregnant, there is a chance. There is a 25% chance that this child will not be affected. 25. There is a 50% chance that this child will not be affected, but there'll be a carrier. But there is a 25% chance in that same pregnancy that this child will be affected and they have the SS genotype. Okay, so these are the possibilities that we have to talk about. And this is the same in pregnancy. One pregnancy, two pregnancy, three pregnancy, four up to, if you like, a hundred. <laughs> Those are the possibilities. So going back to this question, where they, this, these people say, I and my wife are AS genotype and we now have two kids with none as SS. Can you see how that is possible? Of course it's possible because both times, both their pregnancies, both their pregnancies, they were fortunate to contribute A. Each of them contributed their A. Can you see the A from the man coming in here? And can you see the A from the woman coming in here? Both times they were fortunate to contribute the A gene to that, to that child. So I would say to them, don't push your luck, my friend. Please don't push your luck, especially if you're in a country where you don't have access to um, regular healthcare and all the amenities, or you can't afford it, please don't push your luck. I think you've, if you've, you know, you've tried it and you've had, you've got, it is possible. This is how it is possible. But I would be extremely concerned because you may try it and say, oh, we're lucky the first two times. 
the next two times you might toss the dice you might toss the dice and it turns up one so you might you might decide okay we're going to have a child and then in that instance you contribute an s and your partner contributes an s and that's a child with an ss genotype so i would say it is possible i'll go further to advise you please don't push your push your lock and that's uh, you know unless unless you're, you're you have access to pre-implantation genetic diagnosis and you can have that treatment which i said it's not available everywhere and it can be quite expensive in those countries um where they they do have it and it's not on an insurance plan and it's not in um, a large setting for example in um, higher income um, um countries please think about it if you're not in a country where you have regular uh, electric, uh, light supply uh, you have well established healthcare systems that you can call in an emergency if the child is having a bone crisis or an anemia crisis or some other severe medical condition you can have access to emergency care by ambulance you get to the hospital and the hospital doors are open there is the, 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 the medical team ready there are people on call ready to take charge to take hold and you're not so waiting for treatment or the doctor isn't there or one story or the other that, that's not that is not the kind of setting that you want to expose a child with ss or sc or cc that is not it so please, if you're sitting there asking that question or saying, well, what I'm saying doesn't, please have that at the back of your mind.